Welcome back to Calico K. We're doing part two of the spring slow stitch and um, if you remember from last time, if you were watching last time and if not please go back and have a look at part one because it, um, it sets the scene for this really cute little springtime slow stitch. It's based on snowdrops and catkins and um, the hope of spring and all that comes with it. So last time we looked at resources, at fabrics, at how you can use things to create texture and we stitched on some lace to give the idea of the sort of leafy frost patterns that you get on the tops of cars and on fence posts and things like that when the frost comes down and it paints those beautiful beautiful patterns and um, and we used a little bit of, of grass fabric with some grass design on it and just simple stab stitching to attach that we've attached some um, some little snowflake beads on there just to give it a little bit of a sparkle and we've also attached some strappy shaped leaves where you we've used couching and we've used stem stitching and the stitch the the, le the little frost patterns are stitched on with stab stitching but in the shape of like a bird's footprint um, it was something that I spotted when when we had snow a couple of weeks ago and you just went the first time I went out into the garden there was these really sweet little birdie footprints so thought we'd just incorporate them put them in so we drew out the four um, stem lines that we're going to stitch now and we're going to make the, the actual snowdrops so this time round we're going to do snowdrops and we're going to draw in the branches um, because we're also going to put some catkins in because these are all out at the moment and they're so lovely and I think we're going to make the catkins we're actually going to stitch the catkins in in part three so please look for part three next week and we'll complete it next week um, but in the meantime go for a walk have a look and see but these little guys lend themselves really well to things like French knots and um, chain stitching they've got such lovely textures and come some lovely color mixing and the stems as well um, some nice color mixing branch mixing so we're going to look at those next week but this week we're going to concentrate on the snowdrops and we're going to stitch the stems using the stem stitch that we learned last week and if you want to to go back and look this I've slotted some tutorials in there as well and this week we're going to look at um, blanket stitch and we're going to look at lazy daisy so both of those today so to start off stitching the snowdrops we're going to thread up some needles with some green thread I've preloaded some of mine I, I tend to thread up a few needles and then when you're in that creative process you're not going to keep having to stop thread needles so I thread a few up and then I can just get on with it and if you are stitching if you're doing slow stitching the whole idea of slow stitching is to be stitching mindfully is to think in terms of letting go of yesterday tomorrow letting leave leave all the stresses leave all the worries leave all the chatter um, and just concentrate on what you're doing so you're thinking about memories you're thinking about wishes you're thinking about maybe just journaling telling a story so you don't want to be worrying about keep stopping and starting you want to just keep on going so I thread up a few needles just so that it doesn't break the flow so I'm, I'm going to do this upside down so we're just going to stem stitch these stems perfect that's why we use a stem stitch and um, start sewing them in now one of the things that you need to think about when you're doing any kind of embroidery when you're using embroidery silks 
is to concentrate on the amount of thread you might need for the stitches you're doing. On most of the work that we're doing on here, um, it's fairly fine, it doesn't need an enormous amount. So the, the stitch, the uh, threads come in six strands of six and I tend to split them and um, use them in strands of three. So it's something that will depend on the size of the stitches, on the texture that you want to create and how bulky you want it to look. Most of the work that I do, I use three strands. So I'm just stem stitching up. We learnt stem stitching last um, session in part one. And please have a look down on the playlist and you should see part one sitting there. And that gives you a nice introduction to why we're doing what we're doing as well. And I'm doing this without my glasses on. <clears throat> there. <laughs> That's going to make things a lot easier. <laughs> I forget to put them on. They sit on my head or they sit on my desk and I think, why can't I not see what I'm doing? So nice, easy stitch this, just backwards and forwards. I, I, it feels a little bit like a rocking horse type stitch. You're going back and then you're coming forwards and then you're going back again. So you're always going back halfway. <clears throat> it's a nice stitch to use if you're curving. So when you're trying to make something that is has a curved feel, can you see this stem slightly curves and stem stitch is really nice for going around corners gently. It's not very good to do it sharp, but if it's a gentle curve, then it's a really nice stitch to do that. Um, it's quite a good stitch for lettering as well. Um, although my preference for lettering is generally a really small chain stitch. It's a little bit more precise. There we go, so there's the first one. And we'll just zip through the other three and um, make a whole set of these. So here we are with our four stem stitched stems, stalks, however you want to call them. And we're now going to put the tops on the snowdrops. So to start this, I decided that when you look at snowdrops, pull one out here, when you look at a snowdrop, the top of it has a little green bulb. And I thought it might be quite nice to have a little bit more texture going on here. So I've decided that what I'm going to use are little green buttons. So I've got four I've picked out and they're, they're not dissimilar to the size. Pop that back in the water. Um, but I thought they'd give a bit of an extra oomph. Let's put that one down there. There you go. So they give the little bulb idea but before I put the buttons on what I do want to do is in the center of a snowdrop you've always got the little green beautiful little green stripes so I'm going to add some of those to the top of the snowdrop and then I shall stitch the button over where they start so you'll see what I mean so I'm just going to get my thread attached and then I'm going to come up just the, the, the side of the stem that I want the snowdrop petals to come from. So this one, you can see this one's curving this way. So I'm going to have the flower out here. In fact, what we'll do to just to help is maybe we'll put the flower 
the petals, just give an indication of where those petals are going to sit. Probably something like that. This one I might have one that side, one that side, and then one there. That one will have all three coming out. And I think that one, because it's little, I think we'll turn that into a bud. I'd like to have one of them as a little bud. And I think, rather than embroidery, we're going to use a button. So I'm going to use that little white pearly button. If you've got antique buttons, these are a lovely way of using them because you never end up with a set. You always end up with a few, um, two or three. So I'm going to use that as my little pearly bit. So what I'm going to do is just put three long stitches coming out from the stem and I'm going to do this and then before I disappear I shall just pop a button just on the top so the, you don't have to put buttons, when you're doing this sort of thing, you don't have to put a button on like you would if you were actually wearing a piece of clothing. They're not going to be through a buttonhole. They're not going to have loads and loads of pressure put on them. So a couple of, of stitches will be absolutely fine. You don't need loads and loads. So I'm going to go straight over to the next one. So there's, there's my first button. So I'm going to come straight over to the next one and then I'm going to do another three. I'm going to take these lines down a bit further because it's a little bit more overhanging. And again, remember, there's no prescribed size of stitch. There's no neat stitching. You don't have to worry too much about that. The only thing I will say is that if you're not using an embroidery hoop, do be careful with your tension. So if you look on the back here, there's some long stitches on the back here where I've gone across. And you just need to make sure that you haven't pulled it tight because you'll get puckering otherwise and that's never a good look. So um, I'm just going to pop the button on the top of this one. And I want it to sit back a bit. So I just I bring the stitches back away from the ones that I've just done so that the button sits on the top rather than over the top. You don't want to hide your stitches with the button. So again, you don't need to do this. You're not sewing it on a pair of trousers. You're just attaching it on a piece of art. So you don't need to be um, too brutal. So there's that one. And then I'm going to come straight across to this flower here. So can you see they look, they give quite an effective look. So I'm just going to attach these two. And then with this one, I'm not doing any green stab stitches. I am just going to put the button on because this is just going to be that top bulb for the little pearl drop that is going to be the unopened snowdrop. So there we go, but I'm not going to do the snowdrop bulb in, with green thread, so I'm going to finish this up at the back here, just do a couple of over stitches, lock that stitch up, I can't come undone then. And then I'm going to come over to my white thread and just underneath that button, I'm just going to do a couple of over stitches there. And again, you see, you don't have to worry about being too neat on the back because the chances are you're either going to use this as a wall hanging or as a in a frame, or you can put it onto a card or something like that. So you're not going to see the back. So we don't worry about things like that, it doesn't matter. So there's my green button. So I'm just gonna come up under my green button, give a little gap, 
lost my button there we go and then we're just going to pop the white button in underneath so it just gives an indication of an unopened snowdrop and they're just so precious when they're like that they literally do look like little pearl drops it's just so pretty and they are such an indication of spring they're a real herald the first things that come up in my garden are um are snowdrops and it's just so lovely to see and i've just noticed that there's crocus is appearing now and um, pulmonaria which is just pink and blue and they're popping up now and you just get all these gorgeous just little wisps of hope that we're going to get some lovely weather and warmth and maybe everything will be just that little bit easier I think we've all struggled with not seeing people we care about and not being able to go outside. I know where I live. I see my neighbours in the summer, but I very rarely see them in the winter. We all tend to just be hunkered down in the warm. There we go. So you can see you start to give an extra depth. So when you're adding things in, you're increasing the, the depth of the, uh, of the piece. And it just gives different textures so when you're if, you, if it's a textile piece you can do slow stitching um they make very very good fiddle quilts for anyone with dementia so if anybody has a relative um or a friend that has dementia this is really lovely because they you can stitch this onto the front of a cushion or into a little quilt that is small and they've got textures to feel. And I had an aunt with this and she did like to just fiddle with things. You do have to attach them a bit stronger, but they are really lovely. So we've done this. So what we now need to do is the petals for the snowdrops. So in part one, we looked at um, stem stitching and we looked at couching and we're now going to look at chain stitching and lazy daisy stitching and blanket stitching so I'm going to show you those on a hoop like we did before and then when we've when we come back we'll be actually making the petals for here So the next stitch I'm going to show you is um, chain stitch and alongside chain stitch is also lazy daisy. Ignore my tram lines from previously, I haven't ironed them out. So chain stitch is a, is a lovely one, it's a good connecting stitch. Uh, it's um, very useful for making words, making letters. You can change the size of it and um, it's a pretty stitch. So you start by taking the thread away and you go, you come out and then you go back in just beside it and then come out a bit further down. Make sure that your thread is coming up through the loop and there's your first chain. When you do the second one, you go into the loop. Don't be tempted to come outside of it anywhere back in where your stitch has just come from and then you come out a little bit further down and make sure that your stitch comes through the loop and there's your second chain. So always inside this loop, don't stitch outside, you get an uneven look. So down we go again, make sure that your needle is going to come out inside that chain and there we go, so I'll do one more inside the loop, out you come, make sure your needle's inside that loop and there's your chain. Now to finish a chain off, if you let go of that, that would lift and it would, it would spoil the chain. So always go over the top, so from this side, over the top and you've locked your chain. Okay, so there's your chain. 
Now Lazy Daisy, I'll come out down here. Lazy Daisy is very similar to chain stitch, but instead of it being a line, what you're going to do is a circular motion. So you come out, go back in where you've just come out, bring your stitch, same thing, like a little chain, but this time you're going to lock that stitch off. And then you're going to go back to the centre and I'll twizzle it round a bit and then back to the centre again, out with your stitch, make another little looped stitch there and then lock that off over the top of that loop and then you're going to come back into the centre and out, go back in where you've come out, let's make this one a bit bigger and there's your loop, lock it off. Now can you see what's happening? You're making petals. So if you carry on you'd make a daisy which is why it's called Lazy Daisy and we're going to be using these to create our snowdrops. So Lazy Daisies are flower stitches and again they're really lovely stitches to um, to join, say you've got lace and you just want to attach it but you don't want to stitch it on. You can go to the centre and do that. They're lovely little centre stitches for circular um, additions to slow stitching. I use these sometimes when I'm doing crazy patchwork. I use these at junctions and um, so where the fabrics meet. I use a Lazy Daisy quite often because they're just really pretty to just pop in. So there's a Lazy Daisy. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our snowdrops. So I'm just going to do a nice big stitch in here and get this all light and locked up. And I'm using the back of the button so if I do go through it doesn't matter. And we come out at a point just underneath the button. So we're going to do a nice big chain, so we're going to come back in, down the bottom of that petal and then we're going to lock that stitch with a little over stitch to hold that in, okay? So we're going to do that three times on here. If you want to spend more time doing this, you can use something like satin stitch and you can infill and so you can make that more white. You could use beads, you could actually go up and down or you can infill with the chain stitch and just keep you know going through. So there's lots of different ways of doing this. I'm just doing these with a Lazy Daisy open just to give an idea that they're there. But obviously if I was going to be doing this and it wasn't as a demonstration for example, I would probably just do it slightly longer. I might even, oops, come back to the button there. I might even um, add a bit to this, at, you know, afterwards. The thing with slow stitching is you actually do have to think about when you stop because it's very, very easy to just keep going and adding and adding and adding. And you have to kind of sit back every now and then go, mm, does it need anything else? Does it not need anything else? I think, oh, that's a bit tight. See what I mean about the tension? If you pull too hard, you'll end up with something that doesn't quite look the way you wanted it to. And remember, these blue lines that I drew, this is friction pen, same as we drew with the stems. And that will disappear as soon as I put heat on it. It's disappeared underneath the stems now. So, so there's our first one. And I'm going to go ahead and do these second, uh, uh, second and the third. And then um, we'll talk about branches because I think we really should put some catkins in. So let's do these three. So there we have our little snowdrops and our little snowdrop bead and 
Remember we've left this loose because we're going to put some words in here that I've chosen and I chose new and hope and spring. So in part three, I will show you how to make up some little banners, words, how to stitch them in and uh, ideas for that. But for now, what we're going to do is end up with drawing in some branches so that we've got our idea of how we're going to lay out the uh, catkins, where they're going to fall and so forth. So I can't draw upside down as you know, so I'm going to just turn this around and then I'll use the friction pen again. These are reusable ones, they come with, um, with uh, infills, refills, and you can get them where they don't it's quite frustrating when you're trying to scratch out a design and you've got a pen that keeps failing. It's really annoying. So I'm going to, I think, use this space here because my banner's gonna go in that space there with the words on it. So I kind of wanna to come to about there. So I think my first branch is gonna come up between these two leaves and it's perhaps going to come up here and maybe a couple out here and I'm not going to make them too curved because this is a branch and maybe another one up here and perhaps another little one off here. This is a rough layout. Now I've given myself space between the snowdrops and the branch because the catkins obviously you see that they're, they're some of them are quite long and they just drop down so I want that to have that kind of naturalistic effect where they're just coming down and um, we have a change of color going on here as well so in part three this is going to pop a bit more we've kept to a very nice clean green and white palette so far and it's starting to look very cute um, I think this will end up in a box frame and, um, as a set of four. I was thinking I might make a wall hanging out of it, but actually I think I'm going to make a set of four in, into box frames. But you could do little versions of this, make card toppers and, and all sorts out of them. They're really quite sweet for that. Um, so this is going to be the indication that we've given here of where the branch is going to go. Our catkins are going to fall down. Um, and we're going to be using French knots and um, probably chain stitch, maybe a little bit of stem stitch because catkins are quite knobbly. They've got a lovely texture about them. So we're going to do that. Now the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to, oopsie daisy, we're going to attach our little spring is in the air banner. And I thought down here because we're going to have words up here and so that will balance it out. So when you're looking at where to put things, think about your composition, think about balancing your corners out and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to just put a pin in this and then blanket stitch this in place so it's a little bit more solid feeling. So we're going to look at blanket stitch because when we put our little banner, our spring is in the air banner on, we're going to be using blanket stitch. Our blanket stitch is one of those stitches that I constantly get asked, how do you do it? How do you start it? So I'm going to turn this upside down. So I've come out here. I'm going to come in underneath that stitch and back where I started. So that's my first stitch. And from then on, I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna do it squared. So this distance needs to be this distance. So you're gonna come in the same distance away as you've gone up, level. If you get stuck, actually I can show you. If you're not at all sure, imagine that I'm drawing this with a ruler draw yourself two lines. You have to imagine that this is a ruler. Okay, 
and then if you're not at all sure and you want to be really nice and even and you don't need to be for slow stitching but if you if you want to be imagine that they were drawn with a needle uh, with a ruler you just use your tram lines and follow it so I'm coming in up to the top I'm going to make sure that this is over here and pull it tight and again in up to the top again make sure your thread is behind your needle and pull it tight now you can have some fun with this so maybe you want to go closer so you can go a bit closer half height and then the next one you can do full height or you can do like icicles and you can do a little one and then a long one and much closer together for icicles remember and then three quarters of the way up and vary the lengths and you end up and then maybe a little further away so if you were doing a little Christmas house or something like that in the future can you see and they're a little bit more random so if you've got a branch and you want to hang icicles off or you decide you don't want to do the catkins the way I'm doing it you can just do catkins like this with yellows and greens so there's blanket stitch when you finished you just lock the stitch over so just go over the last stitch and that just locks it in to turn a corner let's just do that again because we are going to be turning corners in a minute turning a corner you'll come in like a diagonal go into the corner then you'll come in again at the same point and another diagonal and there's your corner and then off you go again there you go okay so there's blanket stitch so we'll take I'm going to do it in green because I just want it to fade into the dis into the background. I don't want it to be a an obvious colour. So, glasses on, and uh, just lock my stitch in, and then, like we did on the hoop, we're going to come out on an edge. This is the thing that I get asked so many times when I'm in classes. I can do blanket stitch, but how do I start? Well, you start by coming out on an edge and then I'm just doing a diagonal corner one here, but you come in and then you go back out to the stitch that you've just made. That is your first stitch. And then you'll come in where you, where you made that stitch, the second section, and you'll come back out to an edge. So if you're doing a surround stitch, oops this is where pins get annoying if you're doing a surrounding stitch and you're edging something then you want the straight line to go along the edge however blanket stitch is very very cool for doing the other way so you can create some really lovely patterns I use blanket stitch to make um, icicles um, things like that and you do them the opposite way around so I'm just going to take that pin out now because that little banner's not going to disappear anywhere and I'm going to hold on to it with my fingers anyway. So we're going to go all the way around this with a blanket stitch and then that, oh, see, you get caught up. And then that will be the balancing corner for our words that are going to go up in the other side. So I'm just going to go all around here And there we go so it's just fitted in the corner really nicely it's given an edge to there there's our snowdrops there's our branches and I've also drawn in a couple of ideas of where the catkins are going to go they may not go there who knows um, but it just gives me an idea so next week we'll be doing part three we'll finish this and we'll look at banners, colours, um, how you bring that kind of thing to life. So thinking about your inspiration. Uh, and the other thing that we'll do is talk about 
the kits that uh, we produce. So we, we produce calico kits, spelt with a K, and I'll go all the way through those next week and they will hopefully give you some really gorgeous inspiration for your own slow stitching. So gather all your bits and pieces together, get stuck into a really lovely spring inspired slow stitch and come back next week and see what we've done with this and how we finished it off and learn some new stitches as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this one and um, get cracking and go find some lovely beads and things and I'll see you next time. Take care.